Let's look at the software needed to create the sound wave. We saw the wave is periodic, and we're going to use a data structure which contains the numbers 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3. This data structure, this array, is going to contain the numbers which represent the shape of my wave. We'll have an index which varies from 0 to 15 as we index into this array. And the output is going to be the DAC as a function of this index is going to represent the shape. Five, four, five, six, seven, 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 six, five, four, three, two, one, 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 two, three, and then what will happen is the wave will repeat over and over again. Four, five, six, seven, seven, seven. Okay, so let's take a look at the initialization of this DAC. First we'll look at the port initialization. And so the DAC initialization will produce 3-bit output on port PB2, PB1, and PB0, and these three bits are connected to our DAC that we saw in the last video. Okay, right. and now we will look at the initialization for the cystic periodic interrupt. We've used cystic before. The important thing for us to remember is this reload value here will specify the rate at which cystic interrupts. And this will be an important design parameter for our system. Next, let's look at the interrupt service routine. So the cystic handler is the interrupt service routine, which gets executed every time the cystic interrupt occurs. So recall that what we want to create is this wave, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, and then it will repeat over and over again. This is our DAC output, but now what we're going to do is change this access to time. And we're going to do that by generating a cystic interrupt. And in the cystic interrupt, I am going to do one DAC output. And if I do exactly one DAC output, if I write to port B exactly once per interrupt, what will happen is the time between these two numbers is going to be a function of the period of the cystic interrupts. And so we can see that every 16 cystic interrupts, we're going to have one cycle of our sound wave. We got to finish and update our index so that we're pointing to the next entry of the table and then we quit. So right here we see we're going to increment the index and when it gets to 16 we'll roll it back over. So the index goes 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 14, 15 and when it the next time it'll be zero again. So in summary, we're going to produce one output to the DAC every interrupt, and we're going to control the frequency, the pitch of this sound by adjusting the rate at which we cystic our interrupts. So what about a plan for testing this, John? Uh, real important. We're going to do two types of tests. The first is a heartbeat, and a heartbeat is a minimally intrusive debugging instrument. Every time we're going to get an interrupt, we're going to toggle port F bit 3. And so if we looked along this curve, we're going to see port F bit 3 toggle every time there's an interrupt. So in this way, we can see whether our software is living or is it dead. The second instrument is a non-intrusive we're going to use the oscilloscope and actually look at the DAC wave and see if we get this picture. 
So let's look at the main then. Oh, yeah. The main program initializes our devices and if the switch is pressed, what we'll do is enable interrupts and set up the cystic so that it generates a periodic interrupt. And if the switch is not pressed, we'll disable interrupts which will stop the sound. Let's see how we calculate this number 50,000. We know we want a 100 hertz sine wave. And we know that there are exactly 16 outputs of the DAC per one cycle of the sine wave, the output wave. And we know we have an 80 megahertz bus clock that's controlling cystic. And if we perform this calculation, we will get the 50,000 used in this program. Okay, so we designed everything, so let's build the system. All right, let's build it.